Hey, what's up, everybody? Dorn Aldana here coming at you with another kick-ass episode of the Art of Mortgage Marketing podcast. And today we're going to talk about three, yes, three top producing secrets for taking advantage of today's marketplace, today's current market shift, all the adversity that you guys are facing on the front lines as loan officers, and how to change that, how to transform that into market gain, into opportunity for you and to take more market share and to turn that adversity into opportunity. So how is it that winners always win? Have you ever met those types of people that seem to have the Midas touch that no matter what happens, no matter what storm might gale against them, they find a way to win? That's because winners always find a way to win. There's a trait, a coincidence, easy for me to say, quintessential trait of top producers. If indeed they perennially win year after year after year, regardless of rates, inventory, or the market, there is something about the way they think, their habits, the routines, and how they approach adversity, how they respond to adversity that allows them to turn that adversity into opportunity. So today we're going to unpack that. We're going to unpack some of the things I've discovered after almost two decades being on the front lines, coaching mortgage professionals to success that I think is going to make a big difference to you. So buckle up, seats in the upright position. It's go time, baby. So let's dive in, shall we? The first secret I want to share that top producers use that is either conscious or unconscious, that they either consciously use or unconsciously, they just have the habit of doing and being applying to their life and their business is that they do the opposite of the ordinary. They do the opposite of the ordinary. They expand versus contract. So what does that mean? Well, probably the best way to launch into this topic is to share an amazing and exquisite quote from the one and only Warren Buffett. He said, when it comes to the market, be fearful when others are greedy and be greedy when others are fearful. So it's, again, that contrarian mindset of doing the opposite of the ordinary, doing the opposite of the masses. When everyone else is zigging, you want to be zagging. So there's this counterintuitive, countercultural response. It's not a reaction in fear in freak out mode where the reptilian brain grabs a hold of you and you get into fear and you start to contract. That's a human reaction to an outside environment or out, outside circumstance that has you feeling like you're a victim of circumstance. That's what the masses do. Instead, you want to remind yourself you're a winner and winners always find a way to win. And coming from that place, instead of reacting in fear, you respond in faith. Instead of reacting in contraction, in stress, lack, limitation, and scarcity, and feeling like you're a victim of the market, a victim of circumstance, and it's so easy to do that, right? Because loans are harder to come by. Some, a lot of people are getting priced out of the market, hyper-competitive, right? And so the easy, low-hanging fruit that once was there, that just came easy, that flow of abundance is now grinded to a halt and it feels like now it's just this slow ebb and everyone seems to be a victim of it so it's easy to fall into that victim mentality because you look around and everyone else is saying the same thing everyone else is experiencing the same thing so it's easy to fall prey to that victim mentality of being a victim of circumstance by saying it's the market it's the market versus in every adversity there's a seed of equal or greater opportunity. While everyone else is fearful, we want to be greedy for opportunity. While everyone else is in contraction mode, we want to be in expansion mode. And we want to expand into that adversity knowing that every adversity holds the seed of equal or greater opportunity. Napoleon Hill said that in Think and Grow Rich. And it's just as true today as it was the moment it was initially said by Napoleon Hill himself. There is a seed of equal or greater opportunity in every adversity. The key, of course, is to find it and to have the mindset and the heart set to be receptive to seek it. Because seek and we shall find, knock and the door shall be open. But 
So many people right now are in freak out mode such that they're not seeking it. They're seeking self-preservation. They're seeking the path of least resistance, which is to react versus respond, to contract versus expand. So it's really important to remember that when you start to feel that reptilian brain grabbing a hold of you, and I can tell you, I'm right there with you. I know that feeling so well, perhaps better than most. Because I've been shit kicked by the market. I've been in a place where I was $124,000 in debt. I've been in a place where I'm just feeling surrounded by lack, limitation, and scarcity. And it's so easy to just feel miserable, to feel defeated, to feel depressed, and to feel despair when you just look at the lack, limitation, scarcity, and all the reasons why you're a victim of circumstance. It's easy to give your power away. But if you want to win, you can't afford to put your power in something outside of yourself unless it's God. If you want to win, you can't afford to give your power away to circumstance. You've got to claim your power because one of the tenets of a winner is that whatever the circumstance may be, what dwells within us is greater than that which dwells within the world and that which dwells without us. And so there is a tenet, a belief that no matter what the adversity is, you can overcome. If it is to be, it's up to me. That's the mantra of a champion. If it is to be, it's up to me. Or because I'm a man of faith, I'll even add, if it is to be, it's up to God's grace and my hustle. So there's this surrender that brings serenity and strength. And in that serenity and strength, there's also a choice and a wisdom to discern What do I have control over and what do I not have control over? And we surrender to the things we don't have control over, right? That's the serenity prayer to surrender to the things we don't have control over. And then to have the wisdom and the clarity to know what we do have control over and then have the courage to take charge, grab the bull by the horns and to take the driver's seat position of where we do have control. That is not an easy thing to navigate, right? As human beings, it's so easy to fall prey to fear instead of responding and expanding in faith. But that's really the opportunity at hand. And so that's the place we start from. When it comes to the quintessential trait of top producers, they respond, they don't react. And they have different goggles through which they see the world than the average They're always looking for the opportunity. They know the opportunity is always there. It's just a matter of finding it and leveraging it and harnessing it. The other thing that uh, we want to be mindful of is the fact that the ordinary focus on the adversity that's in front of them in their circumstance, in the market. They focus on the rising rates. They focus on low inventory. They focus on heightened competition. They focus on margin compression. They focus on deals getting poached by competitors. They focus on the fact that it was so easy before in the good old days, you know, nine months ago, 12 months ago, 24 months ago. And Sucks to be me now that the market has shifted. Sucks to be me that I now have to grind and work longer and harder for less. They focus on all that they don't want. And guess what? When you focus on what you don't want, what do you get more of? More of what you don't want. Because where your attention goes, your energies flow and results show. So it's important that we focus on what we do want. And top producers either consciously or or consciously understand that principle. Because while the ordinary focus on adversity, the outstanding focus on opportunity, the outstanding focus on opportunity. So it really comes down to a better quality question because the quality of the questions we ask determines the quality of the answers we get. If we focus on why me, we get a pretty bad answer because you suck, because you're not good enough, because you should have acted sooner, because you're too late, because you should have been thinking winter when it was summer and thinking summer when it's winter, you should have been further ahead of this. You should have been more proactive and you end up feeling shitty because you're focused on all the things you should have done that you didn't do. Well, you can't change the past, right? You can only only change the future by showing up differently in the present. And so it comes down to focus and how you focus the sun's rays determines how potent and powerful and how hot they can become. You can either 
just have them warm up some kind of element, whether it be wood or whether it be plastic or a leaf. You can just have it warm up in the sun or you can take a magnifying glass and you can channel those rays in a very focused intensity to a narrow pin tip of intensity such that you ignite that leaf, you melt that plastic, you cause that wood to combust into flame. How is that? Because of the power of focus. So focus is power, friends. Where your attention goes, your energies flow and results show. The other thing you want to be mindful of is that the ordinary contract or react, whereas the outstanding expand and respond. We talked about that principle. So they understand that if they focus on something that's fearful, then it's going to deplete their energy. It's going to cause them to live in fight or flight reactionary mode, which has them reduce their resourcefulness reduce their ability to create what they want, reduce their ability to show up as the best version of themselves, reduce their peace, reduce their power. It drains their battery versus expands their battery. And you know that to be true, right? When you focus on how the bank account's depleting, focus on how the pipeline is dwindling, when you focus on all the outside circumstances that seem to be out of your control and seemingly insurmountable, you feel powerless, right? And when you feel powerless, do you take more action or less action? Do you show up with more power, more pizzazz, more passion, more purpose, more productivity or less? Obviously less, right? Do you get more creative to create innovative solutions or less? Obviously less. So the more we can shift into faith versus fear, the more you're tapping into the best version of yourself and the best version of yourself shows up. So this adversity can either, it's like a grinding stone. It can either pulverize you or polish you depending on how you position yourself, either reacting in fear or responding in faith. One is in contraction mode. The other one is in the expansion mode. We want to lean into it and say, bring it on. It's not happening to me. It's happening for me. That's not an easy thing to do. That takes wisdom. That takes character. That takes what I call soul strength, right? to have soul strength. Fear is simply an opportunity to, for courage to rise, for the courage of the best version of yourself to show up, for the courage of your winner self, your champion self to show up, where you see that adversity and you say, bring it freaking on. By God's grace, my hustle, we will overcome this. We're going to get stronger from this, wiser from this, sharper from this, more skilled from this. We're going to build more muscle. We're going to take more ground. While everyone else is dropping like flies, we're going to take market share. While everyone else is whining, simply complaining, we're going to be creating and innovating and becoming the best version of ourselves. This is our best moment to shine when the storm hits. Not, not when it's lollipops, unicorns, rainbows, and sunny skies, but when the storm hits. When the storm hits, that's when the pro surfers really start to play, right? You don't see the novice surfers out there in those big-ass 20-foot waves when the storm hits. No, you only see the advanced and the experts only in those waves because it's when the storm hits that there's an opportunity turned out of that adversity called big ass waves that create a big ass rush, right? It's like, yes, they're deadly. Yes, they're dangerous. But when you're prepared, success is when preparation meets opportunity. When you've been preparing your skill set, your mindset, such that you know that you know that you know that in every adversity there holds a seat of equal or greater opportunity, you get excited about the storm because you know you're about to take market ground. You're about to take market share. You're about to show your soul strength. You're about to show your level of preparation because it's your preparation that creates your separation that allows you to show up and shine in those darkest moments of adversity. That's when your soul strength and your preparation shines forth. So get excited. Get excited that this is an opportunity to shine while everyone else is getting chewed up and spat out, while everyone else is in contraction mode. You're going to take market share. You're going to become the best version of yourself. You're going to innovate. You're going to create. You're not going to drift in complacency like everyone else was 
you know, 12 months ago in the mortgage gold rush with all that easy money flow and all that low hanging fruit. No, you are expanding. You're stepping into your discomfort zone, out of your comfort zone, into the discomfort zone of growth. That's the growth zone. If it feels uncomfortable right now, that means you're on the right track. That means you're on the growth track. So don't complain about it. Treat it like how Arnold Schwarzenegger or Ronnie Coleman see and feel about the, the pain of grinding in the gym. They don't complain about it. They don't shrink back from it. They don't try to avoid it. They love it. They embrace it. They say, bring it on. No pain, no gain. So they love the gain of the pain. And that allows them to have a new rewiring of their association to that pain. It's no longer just pain. It's the pathway to gain. So they love it. They embrace it. They're hungry for it. They want more of it. That's their thrive zone. And we want to have the same perspective when it comes to the discomfort. We don't say, man, sucks to be me. We say, why not me? This is my moment to shine. Bring it on. So another thing we want to be mindful of is that the ordinary are simply forgetting that they're the extraordinary. They're forgetting who they are. They forget the fact that they're made by greatness and for greatness. They forget the fact that there's so much in them that is called forth to be expressed, not in sunny skies, lollipops, unicorns, and rainbows, but is being called forth in the adversity. And it's only through adversity that it can really shine forth because without pressure, there is no diamonds. Without pressure, there is no diamonds. Another thing that is a unique distinction between the ordinary and the top producers is that the ordinary in times of adversity, they shrink back from their marketing. They do less marketing. They do less Facebook lives. They do less uh, social posts. They do less calls to prospective partners. They do less creative marketing. They do less events. They do less advertising. And so they are contracting because they look at the bank account and their bank account saying it would not be prudent or responsible to be spending more on marketing when your pipeline is going backwards. So, of course, they look at outside circumstances and they say, I'm going to do less marketing because I don't have as much money. I'm going to do less marketing because why bother? It's only going to be a waste of time, energy, and money anyways, because there's not as many transactions. There's not as many borrowers. Why would I spend more time, more money on advertising and marketing when there's less business out there? So they have this scarcity mindset, whereas top producers, the outstanding, the extraordinary, they say, this is my time to double down on marketing, double down on the Facebook lives double down on my social posts, double down on reaching out to top producing realtors, double down on reaching out to my database, doubling down on things that will push the needle on profit and performance in my business. And so while everyone else is putting on the brakes, they're putting on the gas. Notice again, the contrarian mindset. While everyone else is zigging, they're zagging. So that's the first secret. The first secret is to do the opposite of the ordinary. Let's move on to the next one. Secret number two is step up your education-based marketing. You see, everyone out there in your market right now is still a human being. It's not just because the market has shifted that they no longer have the desire to avoid pain and get into pleasure. Human beings are perennially driven by the same polarity, of wanting to get into pleasure and out of pain into pleasure and out of pain. Your job as a mortgage professional is to help your target market, your ideal clients and your partners get out of pain and into pleasure, to get out of the suffering and the struggle and the strife and the adversity and to turn it into opportunity. So how do you do that? You do that through education-based marketing, to be light in the darkness, because in times of fear, that's when leaders who have not only a heart connection to purpose, to serve their fellow man, to, to serve a struggling or suffering soul out of that suffering and into a better life. But to be able to do it in a way where, where they are truth-telling, 
They're truth telling and they are compelling. They are speaking with certainty, but they're also bringing caring. They're bringing compassion. They're bringing empathy. So they bring the light of love and leadership into the darkness of the adversity that their clients or partners are facing right now. But they don't mince it. They don't sugarcoat it. They call it tight. They don't have to pretend the storm is not there in order to harness the wind to propel them and their clients and partners towards Paradise Island. In fact, the opposite. They say the storm is here. So we need to be vigilant to grab a hold of the rudder, to be leaders of our lives, to turn adversity into opportunity, and to tilt the sail and to harness and shift the position of the rudder such that the wind now will propel us towards Paradise Island, turning adversity into opportunity versus crashing us against the rocks. Because in every adversity, there holds a seed of equal or greater opportunity. So when it comes to education-based marketing, you want to think about it like this. People don't want to be sold, but they do want to buy. They don't want a sales pitch, but they do want to have someone come alongside them and to teach them, to guide them, to lead them. Everyone's secretly begging to be led. So every market condition holds both adversity and opportunity. And your job, friends, as mortgage professionals, is to help your clients and your partners to turn that adversity into opportunity. It's to help them to see the other side of the coin because so often we get myopically focused on one side of the coin. The news is constantly blaring the adversity. They're not talking about it, the opportunity. Their comrade, comrades and peers and colleagues, they're constantly focusing on the adversity, not the opportunity. So you get to be like a beacon of light in the darkness and to show them the other side of the coin, to show them that it, you don't have to focus on the Goliaths of your adversity. You can focus on the promised land of new opportunity, the promised land that they can harness and take advantage of if they're willing to think differently than they've been thinking and to act differently than they've been acting. And by virtue of your leadership, your light, your love, the impact you bring, the influence you bring, you can help them to see that, but you can't give that what you don't have. If you don't have it yourself, how can you give it? So it starts with you. That's why the winner's mantra is, if it is to be, it's up to me. It starts with you. Once you have your cup overflowing, you get to be like that bubbling brook that waters your surrounding area to flourishing. If you're not bubbling up and bubbling over, and if you're not overflowing in your own heart and mind with opportunity mindedness, how are you gonna give that to your people, to your clients, to your partners? It starts with you. So education-based marketing starts with the best version of yourself showing up and shining your light and shining it bright and conditioning yourself through rituals and routines every day, Monday to Friday, to focus on your dream, to give thanks for your dream in advance, to have champion level routines that allow you to get champion level results, to exercise, to listen to inspirational, motivational, educational content, to meditate on what you want to create in your life and imagine the possibilities of what it looks like, feels like, smells like, tastes like, sounds like when you're living your dream now, when you're turning adversity into opportunity and you're staying on top of your dream in victory, you're conquering the promised land and you're living in that land flowing with milk and honey and you're living in abundance in spite of the challenges, in spite of the adversity. What's that feel like? Give thanks for that now. Live in that energy now. When you do, what happens? It expands your light. It expands your peace. It expands your power. It expands your ability to have the best version of yourself show up. And from that energy, now you are leading with light, love, and you are now like a 5,000 watt light bulb instead of a 50 watt light bulb. When you focus on fear, lack, limitation, scarcity, it dampens your light. When you focus on faith and what you want to create, and yourself to source your peace and your power from within, as opposed to getting it from without, from your bank account, from your pipeline, from your commissions, from your transactions. If your peace and your power is determined from without, you'll always be a victim of circumstance at one occasion or another. You're always going to be prone to being a victim of circumstance. But when you condition yourself to source your peace, your power from within, now you're impervious because you realize that Creating a life by design is sourcing from within, not sourcing from without. 
And that allows you to be a creator of in your life and create your life by design versus being created by outside circumstances and to be a victim of circumstances such that you have to submit to them. And you're being a prisoner of circumstance versus being someone who creates, being someone who expands into creative mode and innovation mode and coming up with unique solutions that allows you to be a beacon of light in the darkness. See, when you're a prisoner of circumstance, you can't create. Prisoners don't create, they exist. But when you're in freedom, when you're in power, when you're in peace, you have the space to create. When you're in survival mode, you cannot create. All you do is self-preservation. You contract into self-preservation. So survival mode is death rattle to create creative, innovative thought. Survival mode just has you exist. It doesn't allow you to create. So it's so important to manage your energy, to raise your energetic frequency. It's so important to make that your main thing. You're not just in the mortgage business. You're in the energy creation and elevation business. Your goal every day should be to expand your light. Your goal every day should be living in higher levels of emotion, of joy, gratitude, peace, your goal every single day should be to step into the emotions that would denote you showing up as the best version of yourself in joy, confidence, gratitude, passion, purpose, enthusiasm, creativity. Aren't those beautiful emotions? At the end of the day, why do you want more money or why do you want the new car or the bigger house? Why do you want the full bank account? At the end of the day, it's because you, how it, you think it's going to make you feel, right? Well, why not feel those emotions now? Why not source those emotions now? Why not live in those heightened emotions now? Because at the end of the day, that's the only type of energy that's going to allow you to create those results anyways. Because living in lack, limitation, scarcity, fear, doubt, stinking thinking, you and I both know is not going to get you the results you want, right? We've been there, done that. Lack, limitation, scarcity, fear, and all of those lower levels of emotion create lower levels of results. You know it and I know it. So the key is I'm not happy because I'm successful. I'm successful because I'm happy. That needs to be your mantra. I'm not happy because I'm successful. I'm successful because I'm happy. Right. And from that place, now we can create. So the other thing that I want to talk about that really ties into this, it's important for me to, uh, to highlight is that when rates are up like they are right now, right? All time high since 2008. So it's you know 14 years since it's been this high. We want to be in a place where we're seeing the opportunity. Where's the opportunity? There's more inventory than there has been in probably two or three years right now in many places with rare exception. And home prices are going down in most places, if, if uh, not all. So as rates go up, we're seeing more inventory, more choice, more selection in product, in homes, and we're seeing prices go down. What does that mean for investors and people who want to get in the market? What that means is they're not paying overinflated prices where they're paying $100,000, $200,000, $300,000 more than what the house is worth. So is that a good thing for investors? Absolutely. Right? And if they want to have more selection, more choice, is that a good thing to have more choice? Absolutely. So the key here is to focus on when it comes to education-based marketing, focus on the fact that this is the best time to have the most amount of selection in homes to buy. This is the best time to be able to invest since 2008. This is the best time, certainly in the last few years, to look at all the different opportunities to get into the market while everyone else is trying to get out of the market. When people are trying to get out of the market, we want to be getting into the market. When people are saying, oh, this is not, you know, they're in freak out mode. When people are fear fearful, this is the time to be greedy. That's what Warren Buffett said, right? So when you see stock prices dropping on something that you've been tracking and you see the IPO for that uh, stock was at, you know, say $10 per share, and now it's at 2.9. Is that a time to get out of the market? No, that's the time to get in, right? You want to get greedy. So that's the sort of thing that you want to be thinking about. It. And really, you want to beat that drum like a cheap rap song on your Facebook Lives, in your emails. You always want to be focusing on the opportunity. 
and you acknowledge the adversity. You acknowledge the fact that, yeah, rates are up and some people are getting priced out of the market. But for those who can afford to buy right now, this is a great time to buy because pricing has reduced. You're not over, you're not paying overinflated, overinflated prices for homes anymore. And there's more selection, more choice, more options. Is that good for the consumer? Yes or no? Absolutely. So again, you want to be thinking in those terms. The other thing you want to be thinking about is when rates are down, right? We saw rates down for the last three years in particular. That was the mortgage gold rush. When rates are down, that means less inventory and or higher home prices. Now, the great thing about it, though, is it allows people who normally wouldn't be able to get in the market to get in the market. It allows payments to be lower. It allows carrying costs to be lower. So, yes, you have less inventory. And yes, you have higher prices, but carrying costs are less, right? So in every market, there's both a, a negative and a positive. There's the yin and the yang. Your job is to give both sides of the spectrum and then really emphasize the opportunity inside of that, in context of that. Another thing I want to highlight is comp competition. Right now, we're dealing with hyper competition, right? Everyone their dog is clamoring after the same realtors. There's a lot of competition in the market. Uh, there's less transactions happening right now when it comes to homes. And there's all these mortgage companies clamoring after the same purchase deals. So there's hyper competition when it comes to borrowers. There's hyper competition when it comes to realtors. Now, you can look at that and say, that sucks. Sucks to be me. Or you can say, bring it on, baby. I love competition. That brings out the best version of myself. And so that's what you want to think about when it comes to that competition is it's bringing out the best version of myself. That's when I am most innovative, most creative. That's when I come up with genius solutions I wouldn't normally come up with. That's when I'm least likely to be complacent and drift. That's when I drive. That's when I step out of my comfort zone more than ever before. And that's when I innovate and create because necessity breeds invention. So bring on the competition because that just serves me with a blowtorch under my buns to ensure I don't get complacent, to have the best version of myself show up. And when the going gets tough, the tough get going. Bring it on. So again, that's a mindset that you want to start to cultivate, that you thrive in competition. You love competition. And you might even want to affirm that there is no competition because the more creative you get, the less competition there is. The more you get into headbutting, win, win by the rate, die by the rate, guess what? There, that's a loser's game. But the more you get creative on separating yourself from the pack by offering unique value no one else is offering through innovation and creativity, there is no competition. You become you know, that uh, singular beacon of light in the darkness that is like a light in a porch on a dark summer's night people flock to because of your uniqueness, because of your compelling, unique value proposition. Because while everyone else is contracting or competing, you're expanding and you're creating. So that's a key mindset of top producers that allows them to show up and shine and to really thrive while everyone else is struggling to survive. Now, another thing that's important to distinguish when it comes to education-based marketing is it's not just in your social media. It's not just in your advertising. It's not just in, you know, the things you're doing out there in your community. It's also internally. So I want to distinguish the difference between internal and external. Internal is your database, your database of prospects, personal sphere, friends, family, centers of influence, uh, partners, People who are in your sphere that already know who you are. You've already done a transaction with them. They've already opted into your list. They've already uh, done a pre-approval with you or they have subscribed to your newsletter or they already know you because you're in their sphere. That's internal. So education-based marketing is not just for the external. It's for the internal in terms of you know, cultivating your expertise, your authority, your position as the beacon of light in the darkness. And it all starts from within before you expand without. If you're not taking care of your tribe first, before you start to expand your message of hope and opportunity without, 
you're not starting in the right place because the right place to start is always your inner circle. It's always the people closest to you. The people closest to you should get first dibs on your best stuff. So what are you doing for the people closest to you? Are you sending a weekly video tip? Are you sending them something by direct mail once a month? Are you calling them uh, and giving them a birthday call? Are you doing an annual mortgage review over the phone with your past clients? Are you meeting up with your partners and having events for your partners or one-on-ones with your partners or coffees or having a bevy and some eats with your partners? Are you bringing your best stuff to your, your, your best version of yourself to your partners? It all comes down to prioritizing and making sure that you have a a bilateral dual approach where you're not just focusing without, you're also focusing within within your internal constituency. And this should be the fun part because these people already know you, like you, hopefully trust you. And you should feel drawn to take care of your family. You should feel connection to purpose, almost a high noble divine duty to take care of your tribe, your family. You want to see them as family. You want to make sure you're staying in front of them on a consistent basis by email, by text, by phone, by direct mail, by social media, and maybe even putting on a class by Zoom once a month for both your realtors and your clients. Notice it's about being creative, ways to add value, ways to lead people out of the darkness of the adversity into the light of the opportunity. If not you, who? If not now, when? If you don't step up to serve them in that way, who will? If you don't step up to serve them in that way, chances are one of your competitors will, especially if they're listening to this podcast. So make sure you don't let that happen. Make sure you're protecting your people with the light and love of your leadership. Let's put an iron cage around your clientele, your database, your partners, so they wouldn't even think about going elsewhere. Because as that adversity, the darkness of that adversity settles in in the marketplace, you shine like a beacon of light, like a lighthouse. And they see you expanding into that role and that opportunity to lead them with your light, your love, your leadership into more opportunity. And that's really your role. Whether you like it or not, whether you know it or not, that is your role. When it comes to the external side of the equation, we want to look at a key distinction there as well, which is that these are people that are prospective clients, prospective partners who either maybe they might have known about you, but they don't know you. They don't know you. You have not really created a connection yet. But in many cases, in most cases, they're not, you're not even on their radar yet. They don't know you exist, but they do have a problem that exists, a problem that you can help to solve. And that's the key distinction. They have a problem that you can help solve. And that's where we're going to start to reach out to those people. And we're going to do that in a variety of different ways. So if you, for example, want to be able to build a bigger team, a more well-diversified dream team of top producing realtors who can send you one, two, three deals a month, that doesn't happen by accident, right? That comes by purposeful intention. A ball does not roll uphill, right? Anything worthwhile in life is uphill. You actually have to step in the direction of it with purposeful intention, and you've got to exert some energy with purposeful intention to walk uphill. Anyone can roll downhill by the force of gravity without really any purposeful intention. But if you want to climb uphill, you have to bring purposeful intention. So what are you going to do to attract more partners? What unique value are you going to bring? What are you going to do to educate people who don't know you yet? Are you going to put on a first-time homebuyer event? Are you going to partner with a referral partner to do some kind of community service work or some kind of community event? Are you going to have an alliance with fusion collaborative marketing to be able to impact a particular farm area where you can educate and you can uplift and be a light and leadership in that marketplace in a compelling and meaningful way? 
anything worthwhile is going to be uphill. What are you going to do to start stepping in the direction of being light, love, and leadership to be a beacon of light in the darkness for those people? What unique solution can you bring to the table for what ails those people? What causes them strife or struggle? What's their challenge? What's their bleeding neck problem? What can you bring to the table to help solve that problem in a unique way through educating, through giving useful advice? Because at the end of the day, like I said before, people don't want a sales pitch. They don't want you trying to selling them. They want more skill, more awareness, more understanding. They want to be able to navigate past the landmines. If you can give them a map to point out where those landmines are, they're less likely to step on them and to have appendages blown off unnecessarily. So that's where you come in. You can show them where the landmines are that they wouldn't have known otherwise because of your leadership. And that's really what it comes down to. The last step that I want to highlight that allows you to turn adversity into an opportunity and take market share in these times that most people would never be even remotely close to considering is this. Secret number three is actually before we get into that, I want to share one other thing. The bigger the problems, the more you profit. So how you provide, how can you provide unique value to solve today's problems, to, to solve the problems that your clients and your partners are struggling with right now? The bigger the problems, the bigger your profits. And so again, adversity creates big problems, doesn't it? Guess what? That means you have an opportunity to make some big profits because most people aren't even remotely close, They're not even in the same universe of that kind of thought to realize that if there's big a big storm there's also big waves and yes those big waves can crash you against the rocks they can even suffocate you under their turbulence but they can also give you one hell of a ride and if you're a pro surfer you live for those moments when the storm hits and the waves get so big there's no more novices there's no more pretenders in the water it's pros only you want to start to think like that. This is pros only, baby. I'm showing up like a pro. So let's talk about the next piece of the puzzle here. Secret number three is build your dream team. Build your dream team of top producing realtors. We're in a purchase market right now. It doesn't make sense to focus on financial planners. They're not a great source of purchase business, but top producing realtors are. Why top producers? Well, if you think about it, who is least and last affected by market downturns versus first and most? Is it the newbies? Is it the part-timers? Or is it the well-established, seasoned, highly successful top producers? Well, obviously, it's the top producers, right? You want to hit your wagon to a bunch of newbies or part-timers that treat this thing like a hobby, they get chewed up and spat out? Or do you want to hit your wagon to those who are going to weather the storm, who are going to turn this adversity into opportunity and take more market ground and more market share and who are most deeply rooted to weather the storm, obviously the top producers. And yet so many people in such times as these feel intimidated by the top producers such that they don't even go after them. They go after the mediocre middle and the mediocre middle middle are getting their asses kicked right now. They were you know, making money hand over fist for the last couple of years. But right now, they're on the verge of getting chewed up and spat out if they haven't been so already. They're on the verge of, you know, thinking about having to throw out some resumes to get a second job because, you know, the pipeline continues to dwindle and they did not have deep roots. So when the storm hits, they topple. The top producers, they have much deeper roots. They have a much bigger database. They have a much bigger, more established brand. They have more clout in the marketplace, more authority in the marketplace. And so those are the ones who continue to get the listings. Those are the ones who continue to get the buyers. Those are the ones that are still busy. They may not be as busy, but they're still busy, certainly busy compared to the mediocre majority. The question is, how do you capture and attract those top producers? 
because we're in a purchase business. Everyone and their dog is clamoring after the same realtors, right? So it's like the refi crabs have crawled out from underneath their refi rocks and they're all chasing after the same realtors. So you might be thinking, Dorn, why would I go after realtors when everyone and their dog is going after them? Because we're not going after them, we're attracting them. So you wanna be what I call a contrarian, a contrarian, which means again, while everyone else is zigging, you wanna be zagging. Don't compete, be a contrarian. Don't chase, attract, okay? Don't sell, instead sift and sort and select. See, if you're selling, you're gonna be repelling because everyone and their dog is going after the same realtor is selling themselves, selling themselves on lead programs, selling themselves on buying a bunch of shit leads from Zillow, selling themselves on the fact that they got great rates, great service, selling themselves on this, that, and the other. And so all your competitors are selling. You don't wanna be selling, you wanna be compelling by shifting your energy entirely and putting yourself in the power position where you hold the cookie. You're in the power position. That's one of the reasons why smart, ambitious, growth-minded mortgage professionals hire us in mortgagemarketingcoach.com is to learn the secret sauce on how to do that because that is not an easy code to crack, right? Chances are you already know that to be true. You can't just Google search it or watch a free YouTube video, right? It's not something you can just pick up just through the ethers. This is uh, a needle that we've learned how to thread after 17 years of coaching mortgage pros to success. It's not an easy code to crack. And obviously, clients that we work with, they realize that it's going to be a whole lot more expensive to learn from their own mistakes, trying to reinvent the wheel, than to learn from an expert with a proven plan. So they can condense decades into days. And they can just stick their key in the ignition and drive away without having to try and reinvent the wheel so they can get straight to what works instead of banging their head against the wall, spinning their wheels, doing it the hard way. But what does it mean to sift, sort, and select? Well, just by the words, you can probably sense there's a denotion. It denotes exclusivity. It denotes that you're the one who's picking who qualifies. It denotes a sense that they're one of the rare few, if they're privileged enough to be one, who gets selected to be part of your dream team, not the other way around. There's a sense of privilege where they feel privileged to have the opportunity to work with you. That's very different than selling yourself. That's very different than chasing. That's very different than you know having that uh, golden retriever you know, panting to try and get their business, right? Where you're groveling and you're chasing and you're playing the bitch to the realtor. That's a very different energy. So you want to be a contrarian. Instead of chasing, you sift, you sort, you select. Instead of selling, you sift, you sort, and you select. Sifting and sorting is kind of like apples, right? You're going to have some red apples. They're hot for what you got. They're receptive to your overture because you have the words that work that gets them hot for what you got before you even talk to them. If you use a system like we bring to the table, you're not cold calling. You're not offering a bunch of shit leads off the internet like Zillow or Realtor leads. You have an overture that has them receptive to having a conversation before you even talk to them. Because if you're doing cold calling, frankly, you're doing it the hard way. Just saying. That's caveman methods from the dark ages. <laughs> There's no need to be doing it the old, old school way when we got 21st century technology. So no need to cold call. You can get them pre-tenderized and predisposed to at least having a conversation before you even talk to them. And we provide that proven battle-tested campaign. It's called the Realtor Attraction Campaign. So we build a list of top producing realtors that are doing, say, 15, 20 plus transactions a year on the buyer side. We identify Ideally, the ones that don't have a preferred lender, those are the ones that are the most likely to be receptive to your overture. So we're going to identify those. We give reconnaissance systems to be able to allow you to zero in like a laser beam, like a sniper, and identify those that are most likely to be an ideal partner for you. And then we upload that list into our realtor attraction campaign that sends out the words that work that get some hot for what you got. And then bada bing, bada boom, you're booking appointments with top producing agents like a hot knife through butter without selling, without chasing, without begging, without bribing, without kissing butts, but simply sifting and sorting and selecting. So coming back to the apples, okay? 
We got the red apples. Those are the ones who are receptive to your overture. They're open. They're open-minded. Okay. Those are the ones that are going to be easy, breezy to book appointments with right out the gate. Okay. Then there's going to be another percentage that's, that will be a higher percentage of what we call green apples. Green apples are those who need a little bit more education. They need a dose of your certainty, a dose of your confidence, a dose of your mojo. They need a dose of you maybe doing a takeaway to the realize, well, oh shit, I better not go full blown stupid because this guy sounds or this gal sounds like they're the real deal. They're not chasing me. They're actually qualifying me. They're interviewing me. They're seeing if I make the cut. They're being real. They're calling it tight. This person has a different energy. They're not coming as a piece of pie taker. They're coming as a whole pie expander. They're not coming as a lone leech or a mortgage parasite. They're coming as a profit expanding partner. There's a different energy about this person. And so again, we're sifting and sorting. And part of that sifting and sorting process is turning those green apples into red apples. And it doesn't come from selling because the more you sell, the more you repel. Instead, you sift and sort. You're cool either way. You're cool as a cucumber either way. You don't lean into the girl if she's not leaning towards you. You let the, the girl lean towards you, metaphorically speaking, right? That's called posture, where you know where you're going. You know that you've got the VIP Ferrari experience. And if they don't want to step into your Ferrari, next Someone's waiting. It's the SW, SW, SW. Some will, some won't. So what next? Someone's waiting, right? So you've got that knowing that you know that you know that you know that you're the bomb freaking diggity, not out of arrogance, but out of confidence and competence. And you've got 50 plus references, 50 plus uh, items on your added value list that reminds you that you are the no-brainer of the year for smart, ambitious, growth-minded mortgage uh, real estate agents to partner with. The no-brainer of the year. And so you don't lean in, you let them lead into you. That's called sifting, sorting, and selecting. And then, of course, the rotten apples, you don't touch them for a nanosecond. If they tell you to F off, they disqualify themselves. They're not ready for your gift yet. If they go full-blown stupid and they you know, go on a tantrum or a tirade on you, next, you don't sniff, you don't you know, put your finger in that rotten apple, you leave that freaking thing alone. You throw it in the recycle bin or the, or the uh, compost, right? You don't mess with it. You're not trying to sell that rotten apple into trying to be a, a, a green apple or a red apple. Hell no, you can't do that. You just sift and sort. Some will, some won't. So what next? Someone's waiting. So you don't take it as rejection. You just take it as perfect. I just saved myself some time. I didn't have to spend with a rotten apple because they disqualified themselves. They didn't reject me. They disqualified themselves. They're not ready for my gift. It's not out of arrogance. It's out of confidence and competence. Does that make sense, guys? So notice the mindset. It's very contrarian. It's very different than the average. True? And it's refreshing, right? It's refreshing to have this kind of positioning. It's refreshing to have to own this kind of mojo where it's not out of arrogance, it's out of confidence. And you're living in an expansive energy that does not drain you. It expands your energy. It doesn't drain your energy. So don't chase, attract. Don't compete, be a contrarian. Don't sell, sift, sort, and select. Don't chase, attract. And here's another one. Don't be interviewed, be the interviewer. Don't let them interview you. The person that asked the questions is in control of the conversation. So don't let them push you around and push their rules of engagement on you. Instead, you flip the script and you make them conform to your rules of engagement. And if they're not cool with that, next, you're just going to go to one of their competitors. So you're cool either way. But when it comes to rolling with you, they conform to your rules of engagement, not the other way around. You're not playing the bitch to the realtor. It's called honor. It's called mutual respect. And if they're not cool with that, next. They just disqualify themselves. So don't be interviewed. Be the interviewer. You're in the power position. You hold the cookie. And again, that's a big reason why smart, ambitious, growth-minded mortgage professionals hire us because that's not an easy code to crack. 
How do you have so much value, so much unique value that you can actually hold that frequency of being in the power position? How do you have so much value with such a stack of awesome that you can actually hold the cookie and keep holding the cookie and be in the driver's seat and be in that power position? That is not an easy code to crack. And again, that's why people hire us because trying to conjure that up without substance, without real substance is not an easy thing to do. And frankly, you're just fooling yourself if you don't have real references and real tangible value you can bring that allows you to stand in that mojo, in that swagger factor, in that confidence, and to own your rules of engagement such that you do not settle, period. They have to conform to your rules, not the other way around, period. That you have certain standards of how people need to show up in order to qualify for your gift, and you, know, you do not settle from that, period. There needs to be a framework, a foundation, a structure within your soul and within your tactical deployment that gives you enough certainty to be able to do that. Otherwise, you're going to crumble under pressure. You may have noticed, right? So it's important that you have that structure. Otherwise, all this is just BS. And BS, obviously, is not going to get you to the promised land. Another thing to consider, uh, oops, I missed, uh, here we go. Messing with my notes here, getting confused with my notes, but I'm back at you now. So don't be a parasite, be a profit expanding partner. Don't be a parasite who's just coming as a loan leech, as a piece of pie taker. Be a whole pie expander. Expand their pipeline, expand their income, expand their business, expand their ability to work smarter, not harder, expand their ability to close more deals with less effort, expand their capacity and their ability and their mastery muscle to turn adversity into opportunity. Don't be a parasite. Be a profit expanding partner. When you show up like that, it changes the game entirely. And don't go for quantity, go for quality. You see, if you're going for top producers that have the ability to send you one, two, three deals a month, you don't need 30, 40, 50 of those partners. You need like five to 12, five to 12 to put you in the upper echelon of income earned on planet Earth with freedom, autonomy, independence, living life on your terms. So you don't need that many. You don't need that many. And when you have this sense that you're swimming in an ocean of abundance and that opportunity is everywhere, ready for the taking, and you're attracting business versus chasing after it because the best version of yourself is showing up every day. You can just now own the fact that the right partners are coming at the right time in divine order and divine timing. So you don't have to strive or stress or white knuckle or grind your teeth. You can just surrender to the process, knowing the right people will come at the right time, all in divine timing and divine order. Isn't that a beautiful space to be? right? It's like you don't have to strain or stress about it. And when you have a system that allows you to sift and sort and sift and sort and to be able to take that ocean of abundance and to be able to funnel it into your screening process, your interview process, so that only your ideal partners come out of the bottom of that funnel. And you know that systematically it works every time you work it. It's just rinse, wash, repeat. It becomes fun. Because you never have to freak out about living in scarcity. You know scarcity is yours. That's your birthright. Or rather, abundance is yours. It's your birthright. Scarcity is the lie of the enemy. But when you embrace the truth that you're made by greatness, for greatness, God didn't make any junk and he didn't start with you, and you realize that you're swimming in an ocean of abundance, and it's just a matter of allowing the right people to come to you at the right time in the right order. So if you're listening to this, you're watching this, you're like, Dorn, I'm picking up what you're putting down, brother. And perhaps what I've shared with you today has spoken to your soul in some way. Perhaps you forgot some of the things I share with you today that you already knew, but you forgot because we often need reminding more than we need educating. And perhaps you've realized you've been slipping into scarcity mode, that that reptilian brain of yours and your amygdala that gets you into fight or flight mode has been getting the best of you. And you've been in contraction mode. And you realize, wow, I didn't realize I've been living in contraction and stress and fear and sleepless nights. And I've been 
reacting versus responding. Maybe you realize, wow, I've not been seeing the opportunity here. I've just been seeing the adversity. I've been feeling like a victim versus positioning myself to be a victor. And so if you're in that place, welcome to the club. That's why I did this training today, because I know this is a human proclivity to react in fear. It's a human proclivity to have adversity cause us to be in reaction mode and survival mode. But there's no victory in survival mode. There's only victory in creativity and innovation and thriving by virtue of living in faith, not fear. By bringing solutions versus being part of the problem in contraction mode like everyone else. So if you're watching this, you're listening to this, you're like, Dorn, I need your help. I know I need to step up in response, in faith, in uh, being a beacon of light in the darkness, in education-based marketing, in uh, creative, innovative ways to add unique value. I know I need to step up, but where do I start? If you're feeling overwhelmed, are you feeling lack of clarity on where to start and how to put the pieces of the puzzle in place? I invite you to take advantage of a complimentary breakthrough call. But here's the caveat. There's a few requirements. So before you book the call, listen very closely. Number one, you got to be sick and tired of being sick and tired of being a victim of the market. If you're not in that place, this is not for you. You got to be sick and tired of being sick and tired of watching your pipeline contract and not feeling like you're in the driver's seat of your business to do something about it powerfully, where you actually get traction where you know that you're in the driver's seat, you're in control, you're grabbing the bull by the horns, and you actually have the locus of control to impact your results and to turn those adversities into opportunities. If you're sick and tired of being a victim of circumstance, you're sick and tired of having your business go down with the market, you're sick and tired of worrying where that next deal is going to come from, and you're if you're on 100% commission, you eat with the kill with no safety net, making 80 basis points or higher, in your comp plan, and you're wanting to add at least $100,000 or more to your annual income in spite of the market, in spite of rates going up, in spite of low inventory, if that's still relevant in your market, in spite of hyper competition. If that's you and you want to be able to have the marketing prowess and the winner's mindset and the mastery muscle to turn this adversity into opportunity, and I invite you to book a call at mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. We're going to lift up the hood on your business. We're going to have an honest, real talk conversation about where you're at now, where you want to be, what's working, what's not working. And we're just going to shine the light of truth on your situation. And if we're 100% certain we can help you, we'll show you what that looks like. If not, we'll be the first to advise you to pass. But either way, you will leave that call with massive value, massive clarity. Chances are we're going to have some fun. Fair enough. So if that sounds worthwhile and meaningful to you, and it certainly should, I invite you to book a call at mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. That's all we got for today, my friends. This is Doran Aldana coming at you from the Art of Mortgage Marketing podcast. I hope you got some valuable insights, some valuable reminders, and some valuable distinctions on how you can turn this adversity into opportunity, take more market share, and have the best version of yourself show up. So... Let's do that, shall we? Let's not react in fear. Let's expand in faith. Be blessed. We'll see you on the next episode. Peace, y'all.